Malachi chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger. He shall prepare the way. Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verse 10. For this is he, of whom is written, Behold, behold, yeah. behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Mark, Mark 1, verse 2. And as is written in the prophets, plural, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Isaiah. Isaiah 40. Verse 3. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Malachi. Now, here we're talking about, and we're going to see Okay, three, not one. Looking at that. Oh, that looks weird. This is Elijah. Now you're gonna say, well, it, it's John the Baptist. We when we get when we go to the, the Gospel of Matthew, Lord willing, we're going to we will see that they will question Jesus, say, Well the scriptures say here in Isaiah, isn't Elijah supposed to come? And Jesus say he's already come. And he's going to point to John the Baptist. And we'll, hopefully, Lord willing, we'll get into it. But that's because the nation has outright, we'll see it in a moment, the nation is, is totally reject Jesus. So they get, they get John the Baptist, they don't get Elijah. But John the Baptist fits the character and they're looking like Elijah. Now we're going to find another name coming up in Malachi before we close. We're going to find Moses. And we'll find Jesus. And this will point to the two witnesses that are in the tribulation period, Moses and Elijah. Here's Elijah. But he's John the Baptist. And says, Behold, I will send my messenger. He will he shall prepare the way before me. That's God speaking. Remember, Malachi, God is speaking. Malachi is sitting there. You can't say about Malachi. No one can say about Malachi. Well, it's written by men. No, it's not. And I could be wrong, but this is okay. But Malachi could be sitting at a table with paper and pen and the Lord speaking and he's writing down. When Baruch wrote from Jeremiah, Jeremiah wrote what God told him to write. So what we're looking at Malachi chapter 3 is God is speaking. So before me is God telling that to Jehovah Witnesses as we are definitely speaking about Jesus. Who is God? It's a serious error to say that Jesus is not God. And the Lord, well look at that, capital L, small O, small R, small D. We're talking about Jesus. And we usually see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital Why is it not that way here? And the Jehovah Witnesses will we'll see. If you are speaking about Jesus, it's only got a capital L, not the O-R-D. Because when Elijah came at the first advent of Jesus, the Jew wanted a conqueror 
not a suffering Messiah and not God. They plain and simple will bring up to everyday English. Israel wanted a man to come and kick Rome's butt. And we will make him king. And check out this king. He can feed us with bread. And Jesus went off and went off and prayed and, and, and sent the disciples out. And he left because he knew they would make him a king. Not because they wanted God. Because they wanted food, and I'll tell you, I think it's John chapter 6. But reason why it's not capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, because they did not receive Jesus as God. Thus, Elijah becomes John the Baptist. And when the disciples... Apostles are sent out in the book of Acts and they persecute him. And, and, and Paul finally said, You know what? I, I, I love you guys. I'll still witness to you, but I'm going to the Gentiles. And, and the, the Jews, Israel, corporately is put up on a shelf, not individually. And then we got this period called the church age that God's called in us dead, dumb, stupid. Idol worshiping, pork eating. Imagine what it was for, for Peter to walk into Cornelius' house. <laughs> They're trusting in our, our Jehovah. Not only Jehovah, but your Messiah. We are a stumbling block. He says, Before me, the Lord whom you seek. Well, they were seeking a Alexandria the Great. They were seeking this great military leader. Constantine. And, and you fill the blank in of the worldwide military leaders. That, that's what they wanted. They didn't want God. And they told Samuel, make us a king like all the nations. Well, God was their king shall suddenly come to his temple. Alright, he's at the temple eight days old. He's at the temple 13 years old. His mother and his adopted father faithfully took him the three times a year to Jerusalem. As the law prescribed for 30 years. And to about 30 years old he began his ministry then he shows up at the temple like he was supposed to be. He even had little Bible studies at the temple. He healed in the temple. Eight days old, he's got Simeon and Anna amazed. Simeon said, okay now Lord, let me go home. I've seen, I've seen your, your Redeemer. 13 years old, he's sitting at the temple, he's got him, what's his little brat here? How come he knows all these things? And I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to quote this verbatim, but I'm going to, oh son, you, you, your father and I are just so worried. Hey, woman? What are you talking about that carpenter? I'm about to, my father's business right here at the temple. Nowhere in the authorized version of the Bible does it say that Jesus was a carpenter. Well, you know, Joseph was a carpenter. Yeah, and Isaac was a shepherd and a herder. Jacob wasn't. Jacob was a plain man. Jacob was in the kitchen or whatever you called it with, with his mother. Right? Even the messenger of the covenant, that would be the new covenant, whom he delight in. Well, they really didn't delight in unless he healed them. 
and fed them. They were amazed at his doctrine and his teachings. But as God, no. Behold, he shall come, and he did, save the Lord of hosts. And they gave him a cross. That's the first advent. Who, but who shall abide in his, at his coming? Here's the second advent. Who shall stand before his appearance? Second advent. Surely not his enemies. Surely not the enemies of the Jews. Surely those that don't, surely that those that have the mark, You can't put, who shall stand before his man? You know how many people stood before the, the Jesus, the Lamb of God? You know the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes stood before Jesus as they rebuked him, as they gave him a heart? You know what? Look at all the times, most of the times, all the times that Jesus was having, I'm going to say a little Bible study, whatever, teaching the people. And notice how many times the Pharisees, the scribes, and the the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Scribes. Notice how many times they came and interrupted Jesus in his teaching. He's sitting at a table having a meal in there. Who does he think he is? And Jesus interrupts this meal to say, eh, I'll tell you who I am. But let's move on. Who shall stand before his appearance? For he is like a refiner's fire. That is a man that works with metal and what you do is you put the metal in the fire and you're purifying it you, 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 my dad and I we would take old tire uh, weights we would throw them in a can we put them over a fire and then the scum would come to the top and we just sit there pull out the scum scrape it off throw it on the ground and wait more scum scoop it off throw it on the ground until there was no more scum, then we had pure lead. And then we poured it into molds. And like a fuller soap, a fuller soap would be taking your clothes to the laundromat or to the dry cleaner. So we got somebody working with metal, and we got somebody working with cloth. And we find a cleansing by fire and by soap. And when you go over to 1 John, 1 John 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, whether by fire or by soap or by the blood, from all unrighteousness. In the Old Testament, there was a purifying that if it was able to go through the fire, and when you went out to battle and, and you found some, and you could put it in the fire, you would refine it by now. If you found a woman, you're not gonna put her through the fire. If you found a leather, you're not gonna put that in the fire because it'll burn up. You would put it to the soap. And then you would have the uh, the water of separation of the red heifer. We have the blood of Jesus Christ. And Isaiah would go to say, as far as that fuller soap, our, our righteousness is as a filthy rag. Well, the only way to clean that up is through the blood of Jesus. He shall sit, sit, on a throne. Pretty much the first advent of Jesus Christ, he's walking here, he's walking there, he's in the crowd. And if he is sitting, he's teaching. 
as a refiner, there's the metal, as a purifier of silver, silver is the price of redemption. He shall purify the sons of Levi. All right, that's not the first advent. Because they, Levi doesn't even know who he is today. And this purification would be at the second advent, going into the millennium for the Levites, the sons of Murdoch. Because there's the millennial temple built by Jesus. They need to be cleaned. They need to be cleansed. So they can do all the work throughout the millennium. The only one that's going to clean them and cleanse them is Jesus. Like He's the only one that can cleanse us from our sins. And pure purge them as gold and silver. Gold represents deity, king, Silver, there's that redemption that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. That's the millennium because they're not offering anything to that. There's no temple right now. Then, so when Jesus comes back, he's going to destroy the enemies of Israel, the enemies of God, the ambassadors of. Satan and the Antichrist. Then he's going to take the, 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 the nation of Israel and he's going to remember their sins no more and give them a new heart and a new covenant. Then he's going to take the, the Levites and he's going to purify them for the service of the temple. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. Jehovah, God, Jesus. As in the days of old, as a former year, Moses and Aaron. And Samuel. And Zadok. The Old Testament is coming back. So don't, don't reject the Old Testament. I will come near to you to judgment. That's not the first coming. Jesus Christ in the first coming came as a lamb to be judged by God of our sins. Now watch this one. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. What do you do with Harry Potter in the churches today? I'm waiting for the Lord tarries. I'm waiting for the next VBS to have a Harry Potter or witchcraft kind of theme. I mean, after all, there, there's a Halloween in the churches. We were in the church that had trunk and tree. Trunk or tree. Well, you know, and, and the pastor's way. Well, you know, it's not Halloween. It's for Christ. Like I said, you can take Satan stuff and put a Christian tag on it. And there are Christians today who don't even believe in Jesus. Not that the world approves of it. The church approves of it. Well, you know, it's not Esther, it, it's not Easter, it's the resurrection of Jesus. You mean when, when the Passover was last week, and three days and three nights was three days after that, and that was all last week? How come the church does not celebrate the death of Jesus on the Passover day when he died? Why do you have a Roman holiday? Because the biblical, the Jewish, the God doesn't have a little Easter bunny and eggs and chocolates and hats and lilies and dresses and cute little things. The Passover 
the, the, the death and burial of Jesus has been whipped. It has blood. It has nails. It has blood. It has thorns. It has blood. It has pain. It has suffering. It has a lamb having its neck slid open. Well, what can you do with the little kitties for that? Oh, I know what the devil can do. And he's got it at Easter. He's got a little lamb Pez guy, and you pop open the, the neck of the Pez guy, and a little piece of candy comes out. And you get a rabbit, too. If you... And you say, well, what about the Feast of, of Tabernacles? Which is probably the birthday of Jesus instead of Christmas. Well, what Baptist is going to leave his house, grab some tree branches, make a, a, a temporary dwelling, and worship God coming in the flesh? Where we can't have the Magi because they didn't show up. That the family of Jesus was rejected. There was no room at the end. And he's sitting or laying in an animal trough, not a crib. What Baptist is going to say, oh, that's a break that. Well, where's the presence? Where's the tree? Where's the pretty light? The only way a Baptist would, would dwell out of his house and, and, and live in something if he had an RV or a camper or a boat. I see some of these pictures. They, they got a camp, a, a tent. They go out camping, and in that tent, they, I mean, my wife was there. She wanted to sleep out in a tent out in the backyard. All right, we'll do it. And to please me, we ran electrical cord. I had a fan running. Okay? I even, I want to plug it in. I don't want any of that. Uh, when I go potty, I want to turn around and hit the little lever and hit flush. I don't want to do it where, you know? That's me. What did that to me? But against the adulterers. Well, that's a, that's a very different Jesus from the first time he came. Woman, where's your accuser? <laughs> They're gone, Lord. Well, go and sin no more. Well, when the adulterers come to him at the second advent, bam, bam. And remember, we're coming out of the second advent. The sorcerer are, do you realize what Satan's doing? Satan's going Pentecostal. There's fire from the heavens and hallelujah and making inominate objects, idols start talking and start moving. He's healing. Well, no, that's what Judas did. That's what the magicians did when they're, they're standing before Moses and Aaron. They turn the water into blood. <laughs> no problem, Pharaoh. Watch this. <laughs> Look at the snake from Aaron's rock. <laughs> no problem. Here's some more snake. Please email me, which very rarely I do, but people, what's that voice or? I forget, you know, you can write somebody, text, whatever it is, whatever it is, or email. Email me the day that you see and know, or give me a, a printed thing where you see a VBS have sorcery and witchcraft. And I'll mark this day, September 26, 2022. And my daughter the other day came up and says, Dad, you said this. I said, What? And she said, Yeah. They got a sodomite Barbie doll. A couple. 
You said that. Okay. And I'm supposed to be surprised, and I'm not. So September 26, 2022, Stiley said, you won't be surprised when you got a VBS that has sorcerers. Maybe Harry Potter. I'm amazed, you may get in trouble for this, but I'm amazed that you got Christians about with C.H. Lewis. That's witchcraft. That's a realm of filth. Against false swearers. I swear to take this office and fulfill my duty to the United States of America to do my best thing. And they get in office, do everything, but they didn't promise to do. And they lie and they swindle and cheat and, he, and our Republicans. You swear to tell the whole truth and not so much the truth, I do, and then you lie throughout your teeth. That's okay. God will get him if you don't get him. God will judge them if the church won't judge them. If the worldly government and the worldly justice won't do it, God will. Okay? Against those that oppress the hiring of his wages. And I, I, I read and I, I, I hear these Baptists I know socialism for everybody to get paid the same amount. Socialism, socialism, heads of the devil. And Jesus said that a man went out and hired a bunch of people for a penny a day. And he went out three hours later and he hired more people for a penny of a day. And he went out in the middle of the day and he hired more people for a penny of a day. And it got late into the day and almost time to close the shift and he hired them for a penny a day. And when the end of the day came to, to be, when everybody received their wages, these guys thought they were going to get a lot more because they were there long. They got a penny. And those that were there, the, 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 uh, the quickest of time, they were there not the longer. They got a penny. And Jesus did not rebuke the socialistic system. You see, it's the Americanism and Republicanism and the Constitutionism has blinded their eyes to the Bibleism. But the thing is, comes to what God said. If you oppress the employee and you do not give his fair wages, you'll stand before God in judgment. Here at the Second Advent, I can imagine the judgment seat of Christ, and I can imagine at the great white throne judgment. I'm going to say this off fact, we'll move on. But I worked in particular things where, okay, you had to be the janitor, you had to be the cashier, you had to be uh, the food prep. You had to be the manager of the ship. We've been in stores where we watch one cashier work three cash registers and three lines. I bet you got paid for only one. I'm going to say, and I could be wrong. I'm allowed to be wrong because I'm a sinner. I'm going to say people like that, you don't get your fair wages. God's going to judge you. You had that woman doing the job of three people. You got that guy doing the position of four people, and you paid him as one. A widow. And what the widow is, what's she going to do? Her husband's dead. Take advantage of it. The fatherless, they have no no father to take care of them. That turn aside the stranger from his right. Here's a Gentile. You're a Gentile. Who do you think you are? Well, I got, I don't care what you got. This, get out of here. Jesus told a story like this. There was a man that fell among thieves 
and a priest went by. Ain't my job. A Levite went by. No, 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 no. And the Good Samaritan came. What was that man's right to get some get care? If this judgment falls for nations as it does for Jews, I'm not sure, but I'm going to tell you right now the American government is in trouble. Because the American government is all, how much I can get from you and how much I can screw you. And if you don't like it, I've got 46 lawyers. And you want to know who they are. Their pictures are on the buses that you take to come to work. And our lawyers read up all these little pieces of the papers and stuff like that, and all these words so we can take advantage of you. And one day they're going to stand before a holy and righteous God, and God's going to tear that paperwork up and say, what about what I say? Oh, 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 wait a minute. Wait, you want to look at a piece of paper? You want to look at a legal document? Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What about what my words say? Oh, we'll get to your petty words in a moment. Let's get to the words of the King James. Imagine a preacher doesn't believe in the King James Bible. Imagine God quoting from the King James. Does that sound like your word? No, I don't sound, I know because your word ain't the word. The King James Bible was your word. Now, would you like me to call my ambassador that I sent to you that you said was garbage? I don't care you're a Gentile. If you have a right in the land of Israel and you don't give him the right to the fatherless, to the widow, to the employee, isn't it amazing? We'll talk, okay, talk about that adultery. And many, many believe that one of those guys is not a couple of those guys. Because they said, we caught this woman in the very act. Well, where was the guy? <laughs> and many like me believe one of those guys were the guys. Okay? They knew what the law said. But their main ambition was to catch Jesus on his word. To get the people to hate him. You're going to be judged. For I am, uh-oh, the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I am, I am, I am. And one time the Jews picked up the stones. And the Jehovah Witness said, he never said he was God. I am the Lord. All right? Who have we been talking about from verse chapter 3, verse 1, to 3, verse 7, 6? We've been talking about Jesus. And Jesus, who we're talking about, the, the prophecy of the coming one of God, he says, I am the Lord. Now, if you don't believe that, where is it? Look at verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger. He, the messenger, shall prepare the way before who? Me. Look at the end of verse 1. Saith the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jesus, that's God. Okay? I am the Lord. And we know this right. Come on, every Baptist, I change not. And then it, the, the Baptist Bible puts a period there. I am the Lord, I change not, period. Have you heard that? Have you heard a Baptist? I am the Lord, I change not. Period. That's it. End of, end of scripture. Excuse me, we're in the Old Testament. Excuse me, uh, that's a period and a comma, which is a semicolon. 
That's not the end of a sentence. Now, when I should say, I don't know, because I don't know what they do with English today. But to say, I am the Lord, I change not, and, and leave it like that, and that's it, you're wrong. You misquoted the scripture, because it says, Therefore ye sons of Jacob, Israel, are not consumed. Do you see what the Baptists did? They took the replacement theology, they removed Israel out of the verse. And usually when they quote that verse, is to their favor. And what God's saying through verses 1 through 6 is, I promised you I would come. I promised you I would send a, a, a messenger. I will, I, would, I will cleanse you. I will purify you. You will offer offerings before me. There will be judgment by me. And ever since your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and the twelve tribes and all the prophets and all the Israelites, all the promises I made to you. You can look at I change not, you're not consumed as two forms. Very number one is a firm God. There are people who say God's all finished with the Jews, not according to that verse. There are and will always be the sons of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. Because God said there would be. And God does not change his word even if he's angry. Now, the Jew that sinned will have to answer to God. But there will be Jews, I believe, the new earth in the eternal life. Okay, number two. The faithfulness of God. If my God, and he's my God, he's a Jewish God, he came unto his own, his own received him not. If my God did wipe out Israel, if there's ever a time that, that God says, that's it, you're done. Then my God's not long-suffering. My God's not patient. And my God does not hold himself to his word. And what God's saying here, I change not. Israel... I made promises to Abraham. I made promises to Isaac. I made promises uh, uh, Abraham, Isaac. I made promises to Jacob. I made promises to the twelve tribes. I made promises to Moses. I made promises to Aaron. I made promises to Joshua. I made promises to all the prophets. I made promises to the children of Israel. I'm not going back on what I said. I don't lie. I cannot lie. Well, I'm unable to lie. And what God's saying here to say, I am the Lord and change not, period. You are missing the faithfulness of God and the firmness of God to a people called Israel. Israel, you're not gone. You'll never be gone. People will try. Nebuchadnezzar, Adolf Hitler, Antichrist, but imagine, and we're done. Imagine a Jew in the tribulation period, in the great tribulation period, the time of Jacob. Imagine all that's going on and all the hatred for the Jew. Imagine a Jew open up Malachi 3 6 and say, Okay, God will be faithful to us who are faithful. I am going to go through the rest of the tribulation period by God's grace. I'm going to live according to Malachi 3 6 because God says we won't be considered.
But if he goes to his local Baptist church, for I am the Lord, I change not, period. Ooh, we're coming up to an interesting subject soon. 